Nej. I'd like to call the zoning commission regular meeting uh, for November 3rd, 2022 to order at 7.06 p.m. This meeting is being recorded for transcription purposes and the written minutes and attachments, if any, will serve as the official record of this meeting. On behalf of our virtual audience, we ask the public joining us in person to approach the podium in the event that they would like to speak. They will need to announce their name and address prior to speaking. Additionally, we ask the audience to save personal conversation for after the meeting as additional voices cause confusion for those attending virtually. Judy, can I get a roll, please? Fisher? Here. Crew? Here. Ardulo? Here. Manley? Here. Melman? Here. In the audience is alternate Engelman, trustees Augustine and Dashrell, and trustee Swedek is virtual. Correct. And zoning Inspector Wilson is also in the audience. Perfect. I would like to uh, start by the review of the regular meeting minutes from October 6th, 2022. Has everyone had the opportunity to review them and are there any comments? If there are no comments, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes as written. Moved by Manley. Second. Seconded by Marzullo. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm abstaining. Michelle is abstaining. Perfect. So the minutes have been approved. There was also a public hearing that took place in October. So uh, I would like us to review the public hearing minutes from October 10th, 2022. Has everyone had the opportunity to review those? And are there any comments or suggested changes to those minutes? If there are no suggested amendment, amendments, I'll entertain a motion to approve the October 10th, 2022 public hearing minutes. So moved. moved by Sorry. Ms. Crew. Second. Who seconded? Thank you. Uh, seconded yeah. by Mr. Spellman. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Sorry, Mr. Manley, I don't think I you was, were present, correct? I wasn't absent. I was so, absent, right. So you're abstaining from this vote? Is that my no, understanding? No, I can't very well approve it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, any opposed? No. So that has been the minutes have been approved. <clears throat> it's okay with the zoning commission. I'd like to skip the old business for now and uh, move on to the new business, which is a preliminary site plan review for first day school at 2659 Center Road. Uh, the proposal is for the addition to an existing warehouse. The new, the new warehouse or the addition is 30,000 square feet and will be towards the rear of the property. And it's in the I-2 district. Do we have a representative from the, please state your name for the record and, and your address or where you're from. Yes, Joel Copley, C-O-P-L-E-Y, 309 Monroe Street, Monroeville, Ohio. I'm an engineer with Janata and Herner. We prepared and submitted the plans that you have in your package. And as you, as you said, um, proposed as a, a new 30,000 square foot addition to the north side of the existing building. Um, this this uh, ground, if you will, on the north side of the building uh, has been prepared for quite some time uh, for an addition um, in that it's level and, and um, you know, utilities and things were planned for that. Um, and uh, first day schools, Mr. Meadows and the family are, are ready to, to capitalize on that. Um, besides the building, the only other improvement is the stormwater retention basin um, at the north end so that we can properly manage the water and comply with Medina County. Um, no significant changes uh, 
to any paving, um, no new utilities. Um, it's really just a building addition. Uh, the fit and finish, uh, the materials, the, 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 the eave height um, will all match the existing building. With that, we're glad to answer any questions. Does anyone else have any questions? If not, I'll ask a few. That's okay. I'm looking at the renderings here. And so I understand on the west elevation, which faces the parking lot, it looks like there's a bay for access, truck access, or what is that? Yeah, um, it's, it's an overhead on grade door, which um, will greatly facilitate construction access during construction. But beyond that, um, you know, if there's ever a need to pull a pickup truck in or, or something like that, it'll be there. Um, there's, there's no uh, other reason for it from a production standpoint. So it's not a loading dock? It is not a loading dock. And on the east elevation and on the north elevation, we're seeing those large squares that also appear to go to count down to the ground. What are those? Um, I, can, I can let Mike speak to the culture and the environment, but um, as people are working in the building, it's nice to be able to open doors or windows and let in natural light, let in air. So the purpose of those doors is that, is to- So they're just- Let, let nature in. Yeah, eight foot garage doors. They're, those are those are eight by eight doors, okay. yes, along with the windows. Okay. So if, you know, if the weather doesn't, doesn't allow you to open, open a door, you, you do have, you do have the windows. And they, and they, they currently open the man doors um, on the, on that same side of the, or I'm sorry, on the uh, east side of the building, they open the doors pretty routinely um, in the summer. But there is no pavement, gravel, road. There's no access to those by car. No, correct? sir. No. It's all going to be grass on that. Correct. Side. If you, yeah, if you look at the site plan, the lawn is noted and uh, the, the stormwater management basin is pretty close uh, there. Right here. There's, there's really not room to, uh, to put much back there right. in terms of a turning radius at all. Okay. My only other comment is, is parking considerations. And so our requirements within schedule 9.4 for warehousing is one space for each 1,000 square feet. And I think that you properly note on your plans that it needs to be 94 spaces for this sublot, which consists of the office space that we see at the bottom, mm -hmm. L-shaped section, the 38,000 square foot uh, existing facility warehouse, and then the new 30,000 square foot. Mm -hmm. um, the office space requires 201 space for every 250 square feet. And then the warehousing is one space for 1,000 square feet, which is how we derive the 94. Your plans, I think, if I'm understanding them correctly, and I apologize for the audience, it's hard to read these. Um, my understanding is that this parcel ends directly in the middle of that parking lot. Correct? Mm -hmm. So this is, you're treating parking that's on a different sub parcel as a parking for your facility. Yes, it's currently shared spaces. Is there a legal binding agreement for the shared space? Not that I'm aware of. It's a um, condo association, so there is probably legal agreement. Okay. So what, what I, I want to make sure I understand what side you want so on yeah. the, on the, because it, it yeah. might not be let me see i can draw a line did i do that i did but i didn't choose the color Uh, that um, that line that I just drew, the red yeah, line so that separates the on the north. 
part of it. It's shared. And then on the south part, um, it butts up against um, the building that's on 303. It's not shared. So I'm not sure what that line is drawn exactly. But um, so what I'm seeing can here. Can I is, approach? Can I approach? Yes. What I'm seeing here is on the left side of my line, there's 27 sparking spots. Yes. So, so this, on this, on the lower part, there's a building right here, right there. Boom. Here. Right. And that's not in the condo association. Okay. So those spots, if you go up to your finger, keep going, keep going right there, right? Stop right there. Those down are not shared. Now, if you go up, go up, up, up. So those are part of your those parcel? Those are part of those. I believe. Or these are part of this parcel? I think parcel. they might be a part of that parcel. Okay. And then when you go up, here. those are those are considered shared but those are part of your part those, so those, this side's your parcel this side's that parcel they're shared they're shared they can park in ours i park in theirs and they're shared there's about 12 to 15 people who work there during yeah. the day and i and, I, and when i when i get a chance to talk i'll, I'll explain a little bit about about the there really isn't a parking problem until you know, when we have interns come, and that's when the parking lot gets a little more full, but it hasn't really been an issue this past summer. So, well, so here, here's why I raise that. So, we, our code as it's written requires 94 Thank you. spots on your sublot. However, there is an allowance for shared parking. That's section 9.5 for those that would like to look. And what it says is that the Township Zoning Commission may recommend approval of a development plan with a reduction in the number of parking spaces required if it can be shown that the lesser number of spaces is appropriate and consistent with these regulations and when it is determined that, and there's two items, and a mixed use or single use project for which the different components of the use have varying peak demands the uses can be adequately accommodated with a lesser number of parking spaces than that which is required based upon the sum of the various uses computed separately. And then part two is the required parking spaces for a proposed use can be accommodated on an adjacent or nearly, or it says nearly site, or I guess a nearby site, within 500 feet of the proposed use, provided binding arrangements have been reviewed by the township's legal counsel are made to share the parking facilities between two or more businesses or establishments that are not normally open, used, or operated during the same hours. In such a case, not more than 50% of the required parking spaces may be shared. So they allow for some sharing, but one, we have to have a binding agreement, and two, we still have to make sure that the total parking is adequate for whoever's sharing those spaces. And so when I looked at the, the building that is located here, that building by the, um, according to the auditor's website, it's 24,000 square feet. I don't know what portion of that is being used as warehousing, if there's any office space in there. But if we assume it's all office space, then that's 24 spots. So we need your 94 plus 24 for them and then we need to work out some sharing. And I don't see that you have, there are 20 spots here. There are 94 between here, 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 and here. And then those few there, right? 90, no, there are 90, 93, excuse me. So you're still short some spots. And so either my understanding would be you'll have to seek a variance to allow for this and work on that shared agreement, or you've got to figure out how to get a bunch more spots. I don't think you can get a bunch more spots, but you might be able to get enough spots that you can achieve the, the amount that you need between those two parcels and then do a sharing agreement. Um, but otherwise, I don't see how you'll get the parking that's required. Your other option would be, of course, go straight to variance. Go ahead. What was the number, total number of spots you calculated for that? Not, so here, not including these, because they didn't calculate these. Not, they the, not the shared, just by, by definition, what would be required with the addition of this? What's required? Mm -hmm. 94, 95, excuse me. And that is noted, no, is it 98, 98. And that's noted on the, 
sheet that they provided it's up on the top corner. Gotcha. So they, they say that they parking per required is 98 spots, spots, parking provided is 93. So they have a shortfall of five, but that's with sharing. Gotcha. What's the number of employees that are coming there today? Um, um, At peak season, what's the number? That's thank you. Better question. Yeah, better better question. Probably seventy five. Yeah. Is that including the additional staff you'll need with the larger warehouse? Um, it's that's that production facility is just simply shifting. So the head count is about should be about the same or less because of efficiency. So. That's a, that's a big part. The, the current production facility is going to become warehouse um, exclusively and we're just simply shifting over the production facility into the new spot where it's going to be production only. And we're going to make, we're going to assemble our kits in that production facility. We hire summer interns, so we hire you know, college students. We want to make it a cleaner, neater, brighter environment to assemble. Can you maybe step up to the okay. podium? And first of all, state your name, but second of all, I'm more concerned about making sure we have it recorded. So oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Understand. Mike Meadows, I live in Hinkley, 1870 Hawks Ledge Court. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm the president and CEO. Uh, my son here is with me as well. And um, so yeah, the production facility is to um, really clean, create a cleaner, neater space for us to assemble kits. So it's not gonna store product. So we're gonna shift um, where we're currently making products over and we're gonna create warehouse space where we currently make the products. Is production space manufacturing space or what? Distribution, it's assembly, it's assembly. Still just compiling and putting things- Picking and pack, picking and packing. Okay, so that's still warehousing. Yeah. I was just trying to figure out where it would fit within our- And it's really seasonal. So we start, we use approximates. We start around June 1st, maybe middle of May. And last year we ended August 6th. It was a hard stop uh, for us. And I think someone alluded to some pictures they saw of the uh, parking lot at max capacity. Um, yeah. And so- We so, randomly pulled this picture today yeah. because we were looking at it. And there is one part, picture and you can see almost every spot is filled. And yeah. that was part of our- we didn't think that you had that many employees and we see these parts yeah. parking. Yeah, no, no, there's no, no, no secret about it. And, and our master plan is to really um, one day acquire all the buildings in that parkway and really um, assemble kind of a campus environment so that when you come in, it's, it's all one and, and it looks really pretty and nice. So you're currently operating out of two buildings, correct? Yeah, we have a, um, a storage facility, which was the building that we built uh, three years ago. And that has maybe three associates in that building um, that holds 5,000 skids racked to the top. So that, that currently is warehousing space. Okay. Warehousing exclusively. I, I will say that that is a different parcel. So you're yeah, saying- No, no, no. I, 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 I just, just want to make sure you, so when you're I'm, looking at the plan- it's I'm hard. just trying to, so- you're, are you moving all of the warehousing into the new facility? No, of course not. We're, okay. we're, we're, we're growing, so yeah. we're, we're going to keep our new warehouse. And then where we're at right now, where we produce kits and store a little bit above, we're going to turn that into storage, really tight storage with torrent trucks and tight racking. And then our production facility is going to be in the new building where we'll just produce products and not store any products. The garage doors that you referenced earlier is to create light and air. And I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I just so want to make sure that there wasn't no no right car. There. No, 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 no. It's it's to it's to really create a good culture. So, okay. if can the engineers, sorry, sure. come back up. What was your name again? Joel Copley. I I want to try to help us move this forward. One of the things I'm curious about is, do you know where you can grab additional parking spaces from? For instance, maybe towards the back, it looks like you can at least get potentially 14 more spots that I'm pretty easily seeing. I think that you might be able to pull. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to study it, yep. So what I would hope potentially is your option would be grab 14 more spots somewhere and then work out that shared agreement between 
these two spaces, which if you're part of a condominium complex, I don't think that that would be a too much of a problem anyway. And then probably you would have to come back here for a, a fine, for a preliminary review again. Um, that was the only hiccup that I saw and sorry for just bringing it. I was still working through this until today. I reached out to legal counsel on it because I had a question on the language of the code. And so that paused it all. So that's why we're just bringing this to your attention now, because I know Inspector Wilson and I have been working on this at least for a week, week and a half to figure out what needs to be accommodated with this parking to make sure that we, we meet the code. Outside of that, I had no other concerns. Uh, there's no landscaping requirements here. They fully about other I, industrial, so we don't have to worry about a landscaping a plan per se, even though that would be final anyway. Uh, there's really no signage requirements here. Uh, they appear to meet all setbacks. So I mean, Inspector Wilson, I don't think you saw anything additional that was of concern. So outside of that, I don't see any issues. And in fact, once they get this done and move through the preliminary, it's going to be my recommendation. And the, zone, the uh, zoning department has already suggested waiving the final site plan because it's all in the preliminary. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my intent. But at this point, if it's okay with the applicant, I think you need to do a little more work. I would propose that we continue this preliminary amendment review and we'll schedule it for our December meeting. Um, and hopefully by then you'll have had ad adequate time to review it. And then uh, if, even if you don't have the binding contract in place yet, we can put a condition that once that's approved by legal, we can move forward, but we will need at least to see the parking demonstrated. Okay. <clears throat> Understood, I think. Understood. Thank you. Is that is that an acceptable time frame for you for December? I defer to Joel on that. We'll, we'll we'll certainly aim for that. Okay. Yeah, the, the conditional uh, approval helps that. So perfect. So that's uh, if there's if there are no other comments by the rest of the commission members, I make a suggestion that we continue this. Trustee Augustine, do you think we need a uh, motion to continue the preliminary site plan review or? There's no fee that they're going to incur because I'm continuing it. No, perfect. Or you can make a motion to approve pending. I think that there will just continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Steph Grill had a question. One, one sentence. Can you go for clarity? Can you, can you go over the height? The height was under 35 feet and and the HVAC, there is no HVAC addition to it. Okay. So it's within the code. Okay, I heard the matching keys. Thank you. Thank you for allowing that. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let me stop the screen sharing of that. Uh, before we move on to old business, I did receive just today at my desk the zoning department quarterly activity report for uh, Q3. Um, if, I think zoning inspector Wilson is going to be leaving us at this point soon for the meeting for the day. So if you have any other questions and you would like to talk to him about anything, feel free to do so. Um, there wasn't much zoning inspector Wilson, anything else on your yeah, I believe from memory, I think we had 40 new homes, if I remember correctly. And uh, we continue to, you know, have homes built. So it'll be interesting to see what the next report will be. But uh, it's, uh, as you see, when you look at that, it's been a, a busy quarter. And uh, so look it over. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to email me or call me and we'll if I don't know, I'll look them up. So I'd like to, re 
to move on to a review of the proposed text and map amendments, uh, including the proposed text amendments that we uh, have already, we, we initially prepared and sent to Medina Planning Services. Planning Services got them back to us and we, we briefly spoke about them at our last public meeting. The map amendment that rezones town center from B2 to B3, as well as the proposed map amendment that rezones the, the B1 to R1. Um, why don't we... How do, I guess, how would you like to tackle these? Do you want to tackle the text amendments first, then the uh, map amendment B3 to B2, or B2 to B3, and then we'll, we'll do with the B1 to R1 at the end? Does that, does that work for everyone? Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We already discussed the text amendments though, didn't we? We discussed them and made a motion to forward to planning services. We haven't discussed them since we've received the recommendation from planning services because we had the public hearing, but we haven't had any opportunity. So we have to still review them. It may see if there's any changes in lieu of planning services and then make a recommendation to the township trustees, whether to approve or to reject or to approve with modifications, the proposed amendments. So I will briefly share my, I will share my screen on this one. Um, and I will say that planning services comments were very small. They had one typographical error to correct. And the prosecutor also had one comment, very minor. And we will, uh, but those were the other the only comments. So I've incorporated both of those amendments in here and I'll highlight them to you as we go. Uh, the table of contents has just been updated for to include the B3 reference. Um, we clarified in the definitions, the lot width, it said C lot depth. And we just wanted to make sure that we were clarifying that lot width is a comparison to lot depth. So we amend, let me zoom in because that is very difficult for you to read. We amended it to say C in comparison to. We uh, add in a short-term dwelling rental and short-term owner-occupied dwelling rental. This was where uh, planning services had a comment that we're, we have a convention of the spelling of the, of the number followed by the number. So the only change that you'll see there is in blue. Uh, that is the addition that planning service recommended, which is just adding 30 in front of the number 30. We amended the definition of a sign wall to just um, clarify what they're from meant. It means front 12 inches from said wall. We amended the uh, the definition for adult material store to reference the proper section 16.2 instead of the mistaken section 17.4 C. And fences, we deleted the language that said a no fee permit shall be required from the township. This enables the township to, if they so choose, implement a fee for fencing uh, because we do require the zoning inspector to go out and do an inspection and so recovery of the time consumed. We amended the section 4.1 to note that private or public or private ponds or lakes with a natural bottom shall be considered as structures only for the purposes of permits to make it clear that otherwise they don't constitute structures when our calculations are done. With respect to 4.5, we recommended amending it from saying that the Township Zoning Commission may grant a similar use finding to the Township Board of Zoning Appeals. There was some discussion last time about whether it makes sense for this one. You'll remember that Chris Kalina cautioned at the Medina Planning Commission, just be careful to, when you're taking things away from the Zoning Commission and giving it to someone else. Uh, I did have a follow-up call with the prosecutor's office on this, namely Brian Richter. Um, I asked him, look, can we keep this as zoning commission? And if you've ever spoken with Brian, it's never a very direct answer, but his answer was, it should be with the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, and so that was his response to me. 
I personally think that makes sense for a variety of reasons. One is that when people speak at a, a, the BZA meeting, they're sworn in. So they have this, there, there's the testimony component to it. The second thing is the BZA, uh, there's a direct appeal route to the BZA. There's no direct appeal route from the zoning commission. So um, that's another consideration there. The third consideration is that when you look at the factors that are considered, uh, those are factors that are very similar to the Duncan factors the BZA considers for all of their variances. And the fourth factor to consider is, you know, they have the mechanisms by which they do site visits and things like that. We really don't generally do those sorts of things. So for all of those reasons, I do recommend that it go to the Township Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, but I know that that was one of the, the text amendment questions that there was some concern with the Zoning Commission on. Uh, with respect to section 5.2, we just amended in the, the addition of the B3 historic town center district and renamed the B2 the light business district since it no longer incorporates town center. Uh, chapter six, we noted that there will now be seven sections as opposed to six due to the addition of B3. Again, the renaming um, and accessory buildings within the R1 and R2, accessory buildings and structures. We clean that up just by saying alternative energy facilities pursuant to chapter 18, instead of listing some, but not all types of alternative energy facilities. Uh, similarly with um, uses within the R1 and R2 accessory uses, we clarified that just to refer to chapter 18, alternative energy uses, instead of spelling some of the uses out. Section 6R1.6, we separated out the setback requirements for accessory buildings versus accessory structures versus swimming pools versus fences, uh, because under the current code, all of those things, accessory structures, um, including such things as pergolas, um, swimming pools, and fences all had to be no closer than 15 feet from the principal building, and they also were supposed to have rear and side yard setbacks that conform to the setback requirements. Um, so this breaks it down so that buildings still have to be 15 feet away from the principal building, but ex accessory structures, uh, gazebos, pergolas can be much closer. They can be within five feet of the home. Swimming pools were still requiring to be 15 feet from the home, mostly because of fire concerns. And fences just have to comply with section 4.9 now. So they can be on the property line as many people do already, not realizing that they actually constitute a structure. Just a renumbering of things there. Uh, this is the section uh, 6R2. Again, just clarifying alternative energy facilities pursuant to chapter 18. Same thing, alternative energy uses pursuant to chapter 18 in the R2 district. Uh, and the same definitions, oh, where did I just go? Same definitions in the R2 regarding the setback requirements, excuse me, not definitions for accessory buildings, accessory structures, swimming pools, and fences. And this was just a renaming of things as a result of adding the 6B3. Uh, again, we are just clarifying the purposes for the B2 district and the B3 district. Same thing, adding the B3, adding the B3, adding the B3. The schedule of permitted uses, for the most part, we allow the same things in the proposed B3 district that we currently allow in the B2 district town center. Uh, we did, however, expand within the B2 district to allow outdoor recreation as a conditional use. And we've removed some uses from within the B3 district, namely um, uh, hospitals, senior residential facilities. And the other thing that we did is from the B2 district, we took away dwelling units above the second floor, since that's now just at the West 130th Boston corridor and not town center.
the lot and area requirements for the B2 and B3 are identical. So we changed, we did not make any changes to the, the re minimum requirements for the B3 district when we created the B3 district. Similarly, the setback requirements are the same across the B2 and B3 district. So no, no change to the current town center. Uh, off, street park, off street parking requirements are identical between the B, B2 and B3, so no changes there. Again, just adding in B3. Uh, we amended in the, I think this is within the conditional zoning certificate. Let me double check. Yeah, conditional zoning certificate section. Uh, we just, clarified the time that the application should be submitted to comply with what the township is actually doing. Uh, at, they're requiring that the fees be paid at the time the application is submitted, not at the original hearing time, which would occur later. Um, you'll remember that there already are violations and revocations for, um, for a conditional zoning certificate. However, we added in a section about abandonment of the conditional zoning certificate. If uh, the, continue, the conditional use hasn't been used for a, for a continuous period of two years or longer, it constitutes a valid voluntary abandonment. And therefore they would have to then go back to the township. Um, we did confirm that with legal as well. And that one also uh, seems to be okay. With respect to site plan reviews, um, we amended it from planned commercial to planned business because we don't have a commercial district, we have a business district. And then also on a final site plan, we clarified that uh, we had all proposed conservation developments, uh, that a final site plan is required for all proposed conservation developments following review and approval, and also for new construction of all permitted uses in the industri business industrial districts, we clarified that final site plan is also required for subdivisions and planned business or industrial developments, which is consistent with the preliminary site plan. And then we also clarified that for new construction of all permitted and conditional uses in the business industrial district, not just permitted uses. Um, the one note here is that when we submitted the language, conservation developments was struck through a final site plan. I think that was because of the feeling that a subdivision, a conservation development is a subset of a subdivision. Uh, when Brian Richter saw that he questioned why we had removed conservation developments and I explained that to him. But then when I went back and looked at the preliminary site plan language, you'll note that it says all proposed conservation development subdivisions and planned or uh, industrial developments. To avoid any ambiguity there, I think that we keep those very consistent. So I added in conservation developments in the final site plan to make it clear that even though I think that they fall within subdivisions, I wanted to make sure it was very clear in view of the preliminary language that the same standards apply. Uh, section 11.7, it was just a typo in reviewing final site plans that was supposed to be preliminary site plans. This is the criteria for preliminary site plan and the title is review of preliminary site plan. Again, just B2 and B3. With respect to chapter 18, uh, we removed the language that ground mounted electrical and control equipment shall be labeled and secured to prevent unauthorized access. We also, uh, commented on or removed the language that accessory components shall be screened from view from the public right of way and adjacent properties. I will say that this is the other area where Brian Richter flagged. From a legal standpoint, it's, it, it's probably not a problem, but what we, he just wanted to make sure that we noted that one because there has been issues within our township where there was a solar panel went up and he you know, they had to get that resolved. I think some of you were on the zoning commission when that went through. And so he wondered why we're removing this language. Um, and I, I explained it to him as in part because some of it's am, ambiguous um, and also because why are we requiring certain screening for these structures when we're not requiring them for other structures? Um, he said, okay, but he said, give it some more thought to make sure that that's something that we wanna do. So I just wanna note that. So the solar array that had to be removed 
was within the setbacks. Right. That's why it was removed. It's not because it was visible from adjacent property. Right. But it was complained about, uh, the, the neighbor complained about it in there. He's saying, do you really want to remove screening requirements when, you know, there's been issues in the community? So just something to think about there. Uh, we also did this, the, the one section was, I think, ground mounted, and this is roof and wall. It's the same sections that have been removed uh, related to the control equipment being labeled and secured and the accessory components being screened. Which one's this? It's very hard for me to see when it's zoomed in like this. Roof mounted uh, wind energy. Very similar language was removed. Ground mounted electrical and control equipment should be labeled and then accessory components shall be screened. So those are outside of all of the grammar changes, which of course legal nor planning commission had any concern about were the proposed amendments that we've, we've uh, discussed. So is there any further discussion that anyone believes we should have on the text amendments? No. Beautiful. <laughs> So if there are no other discussions, I would entertain a motion to recommend adoption of the proposed amendments as written. So moved. Moved by Crew. Second. Seconded by Spellman. We'll go ahead and do rolls on this, please. I was waiting. Oh, I'm sorry. Fisher? Yes. Crew? Yes. Arzulo? Yes. Manley? Yes. Spellman? Yes. Perfect. That motion has been approved. We will forward this to uh, the township trustees for review consideration. They'll have a public hearing uh, within 30 days of my letter to them. Um, most likely, I think, by the agendas, that public hearing will be set for somewhere around December 6th, but that's up to the trustees to set. Moving on to the map amendments. Let me share the screen. Okay, the first proposed map amendment was the rezoning of town center from the B2 district to the B3 district, mostly to give us some flexibility with respect to future zoning, uh, where we'll be able to work on town center, uh, potentially design standards, potentially setbacks, potentially uses uh, within town center that are distinct from the West 130th uh, Boston Road corridor. The West 130th Boston Road corridor having sewer and water, this not having sewer and water being one factor, this town center having more of a historical historic appeal to it, uh, the Boston West 130th not. So we just felt that there were some distinct differences between those two districts that warrant it creating a separate district here that will enable us as a zoning commission to continue to work on crafting language for these two districts individually. Uh, I sure hope that no one has a problem with this one, given that we just approved text amendments with B3 district in it. But does anyone have any comments on this district rezoning? And I will say that the Planning Commission approved this one. Perfect. And I will take, make a motion to uh, rezone the, uh, the parcels or portion portions of parcels currently uh, within the B2 district of town center as B3 district. So moved. Moved by crew. Second. Seconded by Spellman. Why is this one taking so long? I don't know. I was hoping someone Can else. Can I get a roll? Fisher? Yes. Crew? Yes. Arzulo? Yes. Family? Yes. Someone. Yes. Perfect. That motion has been approved. So we will forward a recommendation to rezone that B2 district in town center to B3. The final thing. And 
it wouldn't be a map amendment or text amendment without my little presentation. <laughs> this one's quick, I promise. So I just want to very briefly recap the public hearing. We actually now had seven distinct speakers, including the three property owners of the six parcels or the representatives. Let me just quickly back up and say that this is the proposed rezoning of the uh, B1 to R1 uh, at the corner of Bellis and Hinkley Hills Road. So we had seven speakers, including the three property owners of the six parcels that are under consideration or their representatives two adjacent property owners, and now two other Hinkley residents. All three property owners and one adjacent property owner opposed the rezoning from B1 to B from B1 to R1. Uh, one adjacent property owner favors the rezoning from B1 to R1. They express primarily concerned with noise and light pollution. We also heard today from one of the uh, property owners concerns about other safety aspects as well. Uh, three lots are currently being used for residential and therefore legal non-conforming. The future land use map, and this is very difficult to see because there's a big arrow defining the greenway, but you can see that the future land use map shows that this is uh, zoned in red, which is neighborhood commercial. Now that's in the comprehensive plan. This is a picture of the 100 year floodplain and riparian setbacks. The riparian setbacks are shown in blue. Uh, the floodplain, I thought I included the one with the floodplain. It looks like I didn't. The, the, up in this section up here is additional floodplain. There's a little island there that's not part of the 100 year floodplain, but other portions of this are within the 100 year floodplain. From the comprehensive plan, we can look at the protect and grow map. We <coughs> see where the red is. The red is indicating where development should occur. The green is where we should preserve the current land. Uh, I'll just note here that at the location of this proposed amendment, there is no red to suggest future development should occur at this spot. From the comprehensive plan, I've highlighted a few pages that uh, I just wanted to make sure that we know that I think are relevant here. Page 32 says, as a general rule, development should be avoided within the 100 year floodplain or on a slope higher than 10%. Page 44 says key themes, diversify the tax base, but in limited areas, focus new commercial development to the Western side of the township. Page 40, 46, objective ED1, promote small scale neighborhood businesses with a focus on serving the residents of Hinkley. ED1.1, attract new neighborhood commercial uses to the town center area as designated on the future land use map and allow a mix of small scale neighborhood commercial uses along West 130th. I'm intentionally including this because what I wanna note is you know, when you see the future land use map, you see business district at this corner, but without with, when you look at the rest of the comprehensive plan, there's really no discussion of that business district. And here you see very clear objectives with respect to the other, you know, two of the other business districts, but you don't see any reference to the business district along Bellis and Hinkley Hills. Page 52, objective CI5, protect the natural corridors along the east branch of the Rocky River and Healy Creek is the primary organizing framework for creating a connected open space network within the township and as a linkage to neighboring communities. That riparian setback that I showed you on the map is the east branch of the Rocky River. So from this section of the comprehensive plan, we are certainly wanting to look at protecting that natural corridor along the east branch of the Rocky River. Page 57 notes that riparian corridors are naturally vegetated lands along rivers and streams. These corridors, also known as stream, Corridor greenways provide a variety of envi environmental benefits that impact water quality, habit, and human health and well-being. Conservation of the riparian corridors along the east branch of the Healy Creek, and, east branch and Healy Creek, is therefore important for a number of reasons. Healthy riparian corridors, which include wetlands, native vegetation, and tree cover, help to improve and protect the quality of water and in rivers and streams. Vegetated riparian areas filter pollutants such as nutrients, metals, and other toxic substances 
from surface runoff before it enters the waterways. Vegetation along streams also prevents erosion of stream banks, controlling sediment levels in streams. Riparian corridors provide important habitat for many plants and animals. I just wanna briefly note some of our zoning regulations. The B1 requirements specify that the minimum lot area is 30,000 uh, 30, square feet, which is approximately 6.9 acres. Of those sublots, two of them are substandard and don't meet that minimum lot requirement. There's also a minimum lot width of 125 feet. Within those six lots, three of them do not meet this minimum lot width requirement. There's a side yard setback. Adjoining non-residential districts, the, uh, the, any building has to be 30 feet away from the property line. Uh, we heard from uh, one of the property owners that has a pole barn within this area. That pole barn is not 30 feet away from that her parcel border as it currently stands. Uh, also, I'll note that if it adjoins a residential district, it has to be 100 feet away. The northernmost parcel of those small parcels that follow Hinkley Hills is only 100 feet wide. So that effectively means that under the current B1 regulations that that's not buildable as a business lot, absent some variances. Here you'll see the map that shows the different uh, widths of these lots. So you can see that the uppermost lot is 100 feet wide. The next lot is 152 feet wide at the road and then becomes very narrow as you move back. The, the next lot's 421 feet, it's fine. It's also over two acres, yeah, 2.25 acres. The next lot is only 119 acres. That's currently being used as residential. Uh, and then the final lot down there is 400 feet. Um, and I think that that is all that I had uh, to note about the zoning and the comprehensive plan. What I really wanted to do with this is just make sure that we we looked at it the comprehensive plan, both holistically, we looked at our zoning, zoning, uh, you know, guidelines, the regulations, to make sure that we're looking at how things would fit within this business district or within the residential district. I have a map with a theme plan. Okay. If you want to just so oh, you know. excellent. I have them too. Oh, okay. If anyone wants to see the FEMA, you can pass them down. I'm three cars. That the, the light green that you're looking at is the flood year floodplain. Yeah. And what year is that now? Because it changes it, every year. Yeah, so it's the most recent one from GIS, which I think is 2013, 2014. Like the Mississippi, though. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure Medina Engineer. The most recent one that is an overlay is 2013. I believe it changes every year. You may want to get in the habit of looking at the new one. Someone certainly has to have comments on this one. Well, on the comments. So just curious, like going back to the planning commission, they disapproved based on future future use. This map. And they cited nothing else from me within this comprehensive plan. It's a picture book. That's it. They're using the the comprehensive plan like a picture book. Yeah. And, and that was, I, I noted that at the meeting last night, and that's why I wanted to make sure I, I spoke at the meeting last night and I gave them all of these sections that I gave to you as well tonight. Um, I want to make sure that those are in the record, but those are the other considerations that I saw that support this rezoning. Uh, but at the end of the day, they ultimately cite it with the future land use map as the justification. Um, the, their whole plan was provided, I think it's in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, and their, their staff comments are on the last page. And what else, here's their staff comments. I'll just read them for the public. It says the site is currently zoned B1 general business. Central water and sewer are not available to the site. The township forwarded comments from four parcel owners who indicated they do not support the map amendment because they either own a business in the district or plan to start a business in the future. Amending the zoning on the subject property will make the Buzzards Cove operation a legal non-conforming use. 
the Buzzard Cove operation would be allowed to continue, but it would not be allowed to expand. I want to note that we actually do have some ability for expansion, even for illegal non-conforming. There's also always the option for variances. But this says we'll make the buzzards legally non they are legally non-conforming. Or <laughs> a million dollar question <laughs> statement. I, I'm just reading this. I think they're both correct. <laughs> the existence of the 100 year floodplain limits the use of the no northern portion of the site. A 25 foot building setback is required when adjacent to a residential district. Screening is also required when B1 use uses are adjacent to residential uses. The comprehensive plan recommends the subject site used for neighborhood commercial use. The proposal is not consistent with the, with the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends that the Medina County Planning Commission disapprove the zoning map amendment from B1 Hinkley Town Center to R1 residential because the comprehensive plan recommends the subject property of business use. The comprehensive plan shows a picture with a color on it. Correct. Whereas all the other districts mentioned in that have some form of plan or actionable item mentioned. Correct. Even within the raw data, there's no reference as far as I could find to this. It really looks like they started with the existing zoning and kept the existing zoning with respect to this and most other things. And then they expanded the existing zoning within town center and within the West 130th quarter. Uh, which is consistent with other portions of the text potentially, but this, there's just no reference to it. Was, was this discussed at all during the, the last planning audit plan, whatever we were calling that? No. The only uh, point that I would say would be relevant is the survey result relating to uh, how, how many people favor like very large residential and I think it was 70% like to keep the two acre minimum and that they strongly support residential parcels. But what I will say also with respect to that is that was brought up at the meeting yesterday. And because those results were not in our comprehensive plan, they didn't have any impact. And that was noted yesterday in the planning services. Am I correct? There's six, four people said they didn't want this. Is that, did I understand that correct? Correct. All three, there's within this, these six parcels, there are three owners. The all three, three, three owners, owners said no. Said no. There's all the parcel that's directly north of this, that adjoining landowner, not part of this district, but immediately adjacent to this district, also said no. Oh, wow. Then okay. Ms. Rushworth, which is down further and across the street um, favored the rezoning. So those are the ones that we had. Mr. Pearl, I asked you and you had said you weren't, you, you weren't rendering your opinion, so I didn't count you as an opinion. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other gentleman that spoke tonight, I think he already left, I asked him as well, and he didn't have one. And there's six actual parcels there. Six parcels. And three said no, so that's 50% are opposed. There's no, only that's three all owners. the owners. That's all the owners. Three of the parcels are owned by Buzzards Co. Oh, okay. And two okay. of the owners, two of the parcels are owned by another owner. So there's six parcels, but only three owners. So we are 100% no with respect to that from the parcel. At this point, why would we even bother with it? That's what they, if they want it the way it is. Uh, I realize it's a little messy and can, can cause them issues later on, perhaps, but. Yes. You're saying leave, leave it as is. Uh, again, if the, the owners themselves want it, I, I, no, they, they're the ones that might have to live with the problem down the road. I, I will also say, because, you know, I, I think that Mr. Spellman brought up a really good point about, you know, some of the uses that were the, the residents within the district were saying could probably fit better within uh, home based uh, businesses. And I, I tend to agree with that. I also wanted to note, and I noted this yesterday, uh, that you know, if your primary use within a business is a bit as a business, would you can't live in that parcel. So that's an important thing to note. So you can't have a parcel where you're saying, look, I want to be in a business district and I want to live there, but I want to have a business as well. It's not a that's not possible. The other thing to note is that 
warehousing is not a permitted or conditional use within the residential. So we heard we heard discussion about do I want to have a party supply for delivery, and that would probably not be permitted or conditional within the business district. We also heard uh, boarding, pet boarding, pet boarding is considered still an agricultural use. We have those within our residential district. Because it's agricultural, it could also be within the business district. However, our business use doesn't allow for boarding as an option. There was also the discussion of pet food manufacturing, some sort of small gourmet pet food. Food manufacturing is a manufacturing use that's also not a permitted or conditional use within the B1 district. So I think we need to be very careful with that. The other things I want to point out are there is language on our code that says that when a lot is substandard, and I, I pulled it up, it's it's page 91 um, of our code. It'll probably be faster for me to flip that. You'll remember that the two northern parcels are owned by the same person. Mm -hmm. And the parcel, they have a pole barn on one par parcel, and that's 0.62 acres, which is below the minimum lot size for that district. In section uh, page 91 of our code specifically states, and I think that this is applicable, but again, we're not really reviewing this at this time, but what it says is for a non-conforming lot, if a vacant non-conforming lot adjoins one or more lots in common ownership on the effective date of this resolution or applicable amendment thereto, such lots shall be replatted to create conforming lots as a prerequisite for development if such acreage is available. This provision shall not apply to any previous approved residential development provided the approved general development plan and final development plan remain valid. My one note here is I'm not sure that they could, if they want to live on the one parcel, I'm not sure that they could put in a business on the other parcel. That would be for the zoning inspector to interpret and potentially the, the BZA to interpret. But I don't think it's a clear cut that on that empty parcel that she owns that she could necessarily just take her pole barn and make it a business as it currently stands. Um, just some other things to consider. Again, you know, the three owners had have spoken and oppose it. Um, I just wanted to look at some of these considerations and see how that fit into the current B1 district but, as we work through. But is it our job to save them from themselves maybe? And again, this is all maybe. Right. If they are non-conforming, as a business, they're, they're, they're their own business, right? But they don't meet the setbacks and the requirements of a business, right? They don't have the setbacks, the lot sizes. They're, they're non-conforming. Okay. Uh, so, so if a business bought the lot, if someone purchased the lot to put up a business there, a change from what it currently is, but it's Would already, that business? It's currently to, business. Correct. Correct. Would that business have to? Would they be granted the same variances with not having these setbacks? And, and that's where I was saying we have, that I think this lots in combination is something that that would have to be looked at at that time because, for instance, two of the lots that are non two of the lots one of the substandard lots could be merged with the other lot because they're common owners. And another one of the substandard lots, it's 0.45 acres, is owned by Buzzards Cove. So that one could also be merged with another lot as part of the substandard recombination process. So both of the substandard lots, their potential to make them standard. But when you do that, you're not two lots where you have a residence on one lot and a business on the other lot. I, I, um, I, I agree with that. But again, that's 100% for the, of the owners correct. do not want this change. Correct. Okay, and there's other issues as you bring it out. Now, I, right. I can't get over that. I don't think it's our responsibility to, you know, look to the future and try to save them from themselves. Correct. Because they express their interest in leaving it the way it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, every action has a reaction. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the things that stands out to me in the planning commission's uh, comments is that. Um, I guess the concern about Buzzards Code becoming a legally legal non-conforming, um, but meanwhile we have three other legal non-conforming currently. Correct. So if we were to rezone the residential, we actually reduce the number of legal non-conforming by three. That's correct. Correct. 
that was also pointed out. And if they were zoned residential, Buzzard Cove would have to comply with the requirements of a buffering. Because Buzzard Cove would also be zoned residential. They as zoned. operating as a business though. Yes, but they're still zoned. So they're grandfathered in currently with whatever they have. And then they're still business operating in residential district. All, all, they don't, of, and okay. all the business zoning so, applies to businesses. Screening is related to business lots. Only zone business, not actual doing business as a business. So then what the you're saying is there should be screening around that entire business zone now. If there's certain certain requirements are met, then yes, there would have to be screening. For instance, uh, along the road, they probably don't meet current zoning requirements. They don't have to meet current zoning requirements if they met them at the time that that they did whatever they did. That's when we review those things, right? They're otherwise grandfathered in. So if well, we no, it, because I, I'll, I'll even in the the regulation, it, it specifically says that. Um, if anything dies, if it doesn't uh, last, correct, it so, has to be replaced within six months. Right. So if we have a site plan and we say you have to have, you know, 20 trees and here are the placement of those trees, and that's the approved site plan. And one of those trees die, they have to replace them. But if their site plan at the time, assuming they had a site plan, doesn't require a plant there, there's no plant to replace. Does that make sense? We don't. We can't go in and say, "Look, you don't meet the current, you know, right. whatever standards, tree standards. You need to comply with the current tree standards." But they would have to if there's any sort of expansion. If there's any sort of expansion, change of use, just like building codes, if yeah. they do, they have to be up to it, current. Got to bring up code. their stuff to code. Same thing with zoning. Now, I, I actually now I have another question would be if adjoining property said, yeah, we do want to be rezoned, would there be a requirement for buffering that? I, I think it would only be if they then came back for, again, it would be at the, triggered at the time that the, yeah. the, the per property owner made a change to their property. And based off of the, the, um, plat um, map that you set up there. The northernmost lot. Oh yes, mm -hmm. is useless as a business. Correct. Correct. Now that lot is owned by the next lot over. Correct. So over they can merge this to these two. Yeah, these two. to the north. Yeah. I drew a picture myself. Yeah. These two are owned are by the same person. Owned by the same person. Correct. But if they were going to use, if they were going to merge, if, 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 but if it were to become a single plat or remain a it's standalone plat, you cannot have a business on that first, on that northernmost lot because it requires 100 feet of buffer. As long as they stay within B1. Residential requires a hundred foot of buffer. Yep. And that's, I can quote the section one second. Six B five. Uh, it says for a building setback requirement adjoining a residential district is one hundred feet in the B one district, mm -hmm. fifty feet in the B two, fifty feet in the B three. So there would be a hundred foot setback, and that first lot is a hundred feet. Right. Yep. So they would have to build entirely within the triangular section, or they'd have to come in for a variance.
and it's the northernmost and the one just south of that that are owned by one owner. That's oh. one owner. The next one down, which is the, the four hundred twenty-one feet. Hang on. The long range. Those two are one owner. This is a second owner. And the rest. And is... the rest are the other owner. And this slot, this slot, and this slot currently have homes on Correct. and are being used as residential. So since they're legal non-conforming currently, if they want to put up a shed or something along those lines, they re they require a variance for that. I, I don't think for a shed they do. For an expansion of their home, they do. Let me look on legal non-conforming buildings. How big is the shed? Yeah, I was going to say, how big is the shed? Yeah. Since they're like a what it is twelve by twelve, isn't it twelve by twelve, hundred forty-four? So yeah, I'm mean, just saying, full bar. Would they require to require a Again, depend for a pole barn. To me, a pole barn would be bigger than 144 square feet. So the answer would be yes. They have to get some kind of But it would it would have to be a variance because it's not a business use. If it exceeds, if it was farm use, yes. But that's a good question. That's a, a, they would have to. I'm just trying if to. Think if the business the use was not yeah. farm, yes. But you know, we get into that thing. What's about what's farm and what's not. So we have four owners, six parcels. Three owners. Three owners. Three owners, six, six parcels, mm -hmm. and not a single one of them, unless combined, you could do anything with. No. Wow. This parcel is over two acres. It's got the frontage. You could do something. Does it have the depth? That's it's got the depth. These are like 400 or something. Want to say no, 197 maybe. They have the depth, depth. Whatever I looked at, they have the depth. Okay. So this one you could do something with. It's currently being used as a home. So you'd have to stop using this as a home. Okay. And use it as a business. Okay. The this depth is 200. The depth is 200. Thank you. Yeah, one night I have 197 here. Um, these are all owned by the same pers person. Which three? This one. Okay. Which currently has a house that's being rented. Yep. The, this one, which is the corner okay. that's being used as a parking lot, and this one, which currently houses the mini pub, the driving range, and the restaurant. So these three are all owned by the same person. This one, by itself, you could never make a business because of the substandard lot. You'd have to merge it. Right. Then these two up here, this one's large enough by itself as a standalone. But it doesn't have the hundred foot setback. Okay. This one is not large enough, and it also probably doesn't meet the hundred yard setback because of the triangular nature, and you're only 152 at the road. So, in order to do anything with those upper two as a business that I see it, those have to be merged. This one can stay separate, and these this one has to be merged with one of those two. And if we did absolutely nothing with this. It remains B1. We didn't change anything with the permitted conditional uses of B1. I, I don't think we're no. or pr proposed to make any changes to emissions. Mm -hmm. Correct.
So Matt, yeah. <laughs> I think he started this conversation. You did. Mm -hmm. Didn't he? He did. So let's so hear what let Mr. Marzullo has to Matt, say. Matt, I think, and the question was, why do we have this here? Yeah, and, why, and I think- Why is it here? And, and I still have the same exact question. Why do we have a business district surrounded by residential where there's really only one business and it's zoned for something that I, whether or not it's even zoned to be operated as it is now is is questionable but it's certainly zoned for much more intrusive businesses um, and per our comprehensive plan we're looking for neighborhood businesses per our comprehensive plan this should be a b2 because the two areas or b3 are, well according to our comprehensive plan it should be b2 the town center is actually another business district when you look at our comprehensive mm -hmm. plan the future land use map identifies three distinct business areas uh, three distinct business categories. Mm -hmm. uh, they, and the two that are listed as neighborhood commercial are the parcel that's up on West 130th in Boston and this one. Mm -hmm. So if we're mirroring our future land use map perfectly, what we would do is have the B1 at, at the other section, B2 would be West 130th Boston and this section, and B3 would be Town Center. And that would mirror the comprehensive plan perfectly. And the town center is called in our comprehensive plan, just so you know, town center. So our B1 is labeled commercial, our B2 is labeled neighborhood commercial, and town center would be B3. In a second, your comment. Yes, we would probably have more questions about how it got to this point than mm -hmm. answers. But then, when we then we started. Well, originally, you know, because of the lake, they there was you know there was commercial businesses in there. I think were, were I there, can't remember exactly when in the was 80s. that all one parcel at one time. Yes, I'm sure it was. And that is the reason why it was zoned commercial, if it was all one parcel. Correct? I, I'm just, I don't one, know. I one, to, one could, one could survive. If that was a farm, you're not going to split up a farm and say, okay, this side's residential and this oh, half of the farm. Up all kinds of stuff. You should see town center. Almost most of the business lots within town center are half residential. Follow the permanent parcel numbers. But again, the permanent parcel numbers, half of one, one lot is residential and half is business all throughout town center. Oh, sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Are there, are there anything in the records or is there anything in the records that establishes when the parcels were fractured off? 56. Those, right. It would, so, you know, 
we did the best we could, and you're welcome to go through archives upon archives upon archives of boxes, but no, not that we identify. Might it's exist not back there. The business district on the 52 original zone, but I believe it does on the 56, correct, Murphy? That's what I saw. And that's why I'm wondering when they got fractured off. Because if they got split off post 56 and then built on after that point, which I'm speculating, but I'm willing to bet two of those homes have been built past or after 1956. I, I really think that it's, you know, while it's interesting to look at and figure out who caused this or what happened here. You know the history of it we got to look forward on this and we've got to say you know what makes sense at this point not what happened 30 years ago who's at fault you know what but understanding the history of it's essential to making the best decision to move forward with it i don't know things change a lot within 50 years you know 50 years ago there wasn't the same types of businesses that you see today uh so it's it's a very distinct, you know, subset of what we've got now compared to what it was 50 years ago. And that's that's also why our, our zoning book went from like two pages to hundreds. That's it. That's because it. you're looking at it as all right, this is where it was, this is where it needs to go. Correct. And right now we're trying to look at where it was, and we don't have that azimuth to look at. Because what I'm wondering is these all fractured after it was zoned business. And then were built upon. Then was there a variance that allowed them to build there? Because there certainly shouldn't have been. But regardless whether there was variance or not variance, they're built upon now, and we need to act according to current correct. But situation. if they were if they were built upon, knowing that okay, I need a variance in order to have a home here then that negates the ability to then later on say, all right, I want a business here and not a home. Yeah, except for, you know, likely none of these same homeowners or business owners are the same people that built it when this first started. And so you're essentially saying, look, you know, you approved my house to be built 40 years ago and it didn't meet building codes then. And then you're attacking me now and saying, look, you need to fix this because when you built this 40 years ago, it didn't need building codes. And that's the same thing here. You, you think that a government agent should come knocking on your door 40 years later and say, you know, this is, you, you didn't do something right. Your prior owner didn't do something right. So we're going to fault you for it. If I recall correctly, I know, I, I believe you guys built the home. No. Okay. I, I, someone had ma made mention that they built the home with the, the with the knowledge that it was business. Well, the other the other woman, I'm sorry for her. What's the, your what's your neighbor's name? Nancy Light Lightner. No, Lightner's last night. Lightner's not sure. Right, and, but she was the she's the neighbor, she, yeah. and she spoke and she said, "I bought it 35 years ago Got with it. the knowledge okay. of the business." But okay. that was her comments. I bought so it 35 mis, years ago with the knowledge. Misremembered that. Then. Okay, and at that point there was already the pole barn there and everything yeah. was already there. Mm -hmm. What disadvantage is it? And I and I heard everyone, I heard the, the the their comments by zoning it, rezoning it to residential when they're living there as a residence. What disadvantage is it to them? That if they intended Do, to convert it, they can't convert it. But they can't convert it because they're not. They don't they meet the requirements. The, yeah. the, the the middle lot. Her lot can be converted. It's just that she can't live there. But her lot is a fully acceptable business lot. Right. But not to reside there. Not to reside. But that's not what she said. She wants to stay there and live there. So then the disadvantages. All I can say is that's the best of the <laughs> I'm just trying to get some answers here.
and to operate a business within there, they would they would need a variance. Which lot? The one lot. The, the north. You know, if they wanted to operate a business now, a home business, any of them. A home based business. Mm -hmm. They would need a conditional use. Conditional use, right? So they. Excuse me. That's what I meant. Conditional use. Okay. So it's still because I I would venture to say that they would qualify. There's two separate home uses. One is home based condition. One is home based, and one's on site. I think, and then home based. Uh, you can. You, your location is at your home, but you predominantly work elsewhere. So think of, you know, landscaping company or some uh, stores their trucks, but then they do most of their business outside of their home. That's a conditional use or there's on site. That's only permitted that in a dwelling, correct. not an accessory use. And that is for homeowners only who want to live and work at their home. Yeah. Flip a flip a coin. It, to me, it's a 50-50. You said what's what's the harm in doing it? What's the harm in leaving it? I think we've had part part of that conversation. The harm in leaving it is in its current state, very little harm. But but the moment that things start merging, somebody gets a lot of cash and wants to buy it up and put a gas station or or whatever it's Fire just store. there's an expansive mm -hmm. i shouldn't use the word expansive there's quite a few permitted uses and an even larger set of conditional uses that's and good, even yeah. now you think you know a, a go-kart track that's very common with putt putts that's probably outdoor recreation a firing range that's probably outdoor recreation so even within the current possibilities there's a lot of possibilities that you're putting businesses completely surrounded by homes in a very tight area where topology is basically creating a valley at that spot. So in, in its current state, yes. You have to go kart, that would be a horrific. My son would love it. And I think that's, <laughs> I think that's ultimately what, what beget this conversation is, all right, what, could very easily go into this location. That's what I, I don't think. I, I think the odds of this becoming a truck stop or a gas station are slim, but I think that the odds of it becoming some sort of other outdoor recreational use or some sort of, you know, uh, retail space, I think that those are a little higher probability um, than truck stop. Hmm. Mr. Pro, please go ahead. I think there's a, a, a current safety issue also with sidewalks. And whew, as I think back to 1986, I think even ODOT uh, said that that bridge going over the tributary that goes to the east branch of the Rocky River was not wide enough for sidewalks. And yet you have a lot of people traveling from the Metro Park into this business district. So I don't know if you want to address sidewalks or not. It's an interesting point because I don't know if on your way in, but on my way down the hill, there was uh, at least four people, uh, pedestrians crossing in that exact area. If I can add to that back when the Metro Parks were at the zoning I don't know if it was zoning or BZA meeting back in the mid eighties, they had no interest in connecting the Metro park with a crosswalk to the other side of the road. And ODOT commented on that. I know you can't go, it's difficult going back in the archives to 52, 56, but you should be able to go back to 86, 88, or just discuss sidewalks further, crosswalks further? Well, I think sidewalks is certainly something to be discussed. And we have certain areas where pedestrian circulation is required. And in fact, with the senior housing, we required sidewalks in the B or requested, and they gave us sidewalks within the B1 and with the B2 town center <coughs> district, we say pedestrian circulation 
is a component to it. So uh, I am absolutely not opposed to it. I very much am in favor of encouraging activity within business districts from moving from one location to another location through sidewalks. Um, so I'd love to see more of them, but I don't know that that's the topic that we've got necessarily. Right I think Michelle, if I remember, when we talk about conservation develops and subdivisions, she sidewalks. was against sidewalks. I had a one so. sidewalks. Are we ready for a motion or are we still contemplating? Did you say a motion or emotion? <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, honestly, if it were, if if it has to remain a business district, I think it would make sense for it to be more closely historic town center due to the historic nature of the property to begin with. It's clear proximity to down to where we are right now. And I think, and certainly the fact that it's surrounded by residential. I think we'll we'll have, you know, I we can't now propose some other zoning and we'd have to move it forward. So what we'll have to do is make a recommendation on this, a recommendation to approve or a recommendation to reject. That will go to the township trustees. The township trustees will have their public hearing. They'll vote on that whether to accept our recommendation or not. If they don't want to accept our recommendation, it requires two of them to reject our recommendation. So if for some reason it's a split vote for whatever reason, then our recommendation would stand. Um, but at that point, we could then revisit whether to put it in B2, whether to put it into B3, or what to do something else, a new district there. But right now our options really are recommend a rezoning to R1 or keep it as R, keep it as B1. I'll make a motion to reject the changes and leave it as is uh, as a B1 district for the time being. I uh, recommend that the commission revisits this uh, in its future sessions. Do we have a second on that? Seconded by Manley. Any further discussion? I just want to make one comment and that would simply be, you know, our responsibility is the health, welfare and safety of the public as part of zoning. And I don't see where either way it makes any difference. It doesn't have, making the change does not provide any more health safety and welfare for the general public of Hankville. Thank you. Just one more additional comment on that. Uh, I'm, I'm making that motion because like my gut's telling me we're rushing into this. Um, maybe just need to think it through a little bit more. So we have a motion, we have a second. We'll do a roll, a vote of yes will mean that you recommend keeping it as B1. A vote of no would mean that that won't happen, that that would not be the recommendation. And we'd have to do that into a motion the opposite way to make a recommendation in favor of it. So uh, again, a yes vote means that you're recommending keeping it as a B1. Judy? Fisher? Uh, I vote yes on the sole basis that from the public hearings we had all lot owners speak out against this rezoning and also uh, one adjacent parcel owner. I think if I was very much shocked that we didn't have more adjoining property owners or owners within this parcel come out in favor of rezoning. And so as a result of that, I don't think now is the appropriate time to do the rezoning. Bro? <laughs> I think we have a duty to look at our future too in Hinckley Township. And so I am not for it. Let me know. Ardugo? No. Manley? Yes. Selman? Yes. 
So by a three to two, two vote, that motion is approved. The recommendation that will go to the township trustees is a no vote. Again, the township trustees will hold a public hearing on this. They will then make their own decision. Is a yes vote. The recommendation is no to change. Not rezone. Correct. Correct. The recommendation is to not rezone. It will go through to the township trustees under that recommendation. The township trustees will hold a public hearing and then they will vote. The township trustees will have the option to accept our recommendation, reject our recommendation, or modify our recommendation. If the township trustees want to rezone this to uh, residential, they'll have to vote by two to one to rezone it. Otherwise, this will stay as a B1 district. And we'll revisit it at a future time. I uh, let's next. I lost my agenda, so let's go through that. Let's see. Uh, I have nothing further. The next regular zoning commission meeting will take place December first, twenty twenty-two. Uh, the preliminary site plan review for first day. So school supplies should be on the agenda at that point, unless something changes between now and then. I thank you all for the extensive discussion we had on this. Um, my purpose of the PowerPoint presentation and everything I've done is to make sure that either way we were legally sound. Uh, again, I think it was a very close and reasonable call. And I think that we will certainly review this more uh, if the trustees don't decide to rezone it. Ms. Grill, anything? No, it was, it was very tough. And I know, you know, I do think we're gonna end up revisiting it and we should probably. Um, look at it, but I, I, I don't agree with B1, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marzullo? No. No. Mr. Manley? I was like, Mr. Spellman? Yeah, I sent an email to uh, the trustees and yourself uh, this afternoon, and I'll go, uh, go ahead and read it right now uh, just for the group here. So, uh, per the Hinckley Township Zoning Commu Commission organizational procedure, uh, this email is to inform you of my intent to serve uh, given my term's expiration at the end of the year. Uh, it's been an honor serving uh, the remaining one year of the former Zoning Commission member, uh, Bruce Schneider, uh, finish his term. Um, Bruce came into the Zoning Commission while I was uh, on the Zoning Commission uh, the first time. Uh, he offered a very unique perspective on uh, just about every topic uh, that ever came in front of us. Um, in each situation, uh, he utilized a, a very, uh, what I'll call a unique perspective uh, that he had um, to make very well-educated, I thought well-rounded uh, decisions. Um, you could never question uh, his motivations uh, nor his intents. They were, uh, in my opinion, very clear uh, of why he was on the Zoning Commission. Uh, and he did it. He simply served uh, on the Hinckley Township Zoning Commission um, to make this community better. Um, he had the ability to remain, uh, I think, respectful uh, in times of disagreement. Uh, he had a, a capability uh, to actively uh, attempt to understand opposing views, try to get that 365 uh, you know, degree, uh, uh, 360 degree uh, perspective on things, plus five. He went above and beyond. He had five extra degrees. <laughs> um, he did. <laughs> this is where you circle around. <laughs> uh, he he didn't let his biases get in the way uh, of any of his decision making. In my opinion, these traits were not just a good sign of a, of a member of the zoning commission, uh, but those are good. They're they're a sign of a good person. They're an uh, even better indicator of a good leader, uh, and that's the way that I viewed Bruce. Um, it was a humbling experience uh, for me to serve on this com uh, zoning commission the first uh, 11 years that I did. Uh, and in finding out uh, of his passing last year uh, and that there was a vacancy, I put my, uh, I put my, uh, cast my, myself in uh, to the mix. Um, and I certainly appreciate uh, the trustees at the time appointing me to fulfill uh, the remainder of his term. Uh, all of that said, I am not going to, I do not wish to uh, be per, uh, appointed to a full five-year term at this point. I can't commit to it. Um, I'd be happy to sit on as an alternate uh, on the Zoning Commission. Uh, and for what it's worth, and this is in the email here, um, I would recommend that uh, the trustees uh, look to uh, Cindy Angleman uh, and consider her, strongly consider her for the full term uh, and, and uh, appoint her to that. 
Um, Cindy brings, uh, again, an, another unique perspective uh, to the group, as does every single you know, member that sits here. Uh, in the last year, uh, as an alternate, uh, I've, I've watched her contribute. Even as, a, as an alternate, I've watched her show up very prepared, uh, has done her homework. Um, she's asked some good questions where sometimes I'm just like, wow, that, like, it stunned me. Like, that's a, why didn't I ask that? Why didn't anybody ask that? Um, and, and to me, she's demonstrated um, what I would say is, is a foundational understanding of the zoning um, and uh, a clear intent of why she's an alternate, why she would like to be on the board. Um, so that said, you know, for, for what it's worth, that's uh, my opinion. I take it for uh, take it for that. Um, the last two paragraphs here, I'm, I'm going to read out loud uh, because I think they're very important to me as I've watched this township grow. And, and, and I state to augment this, I would look to the township's leadership and ask that they find, and I'm referring to the trustees here, ask that they find common ground on which they can unite uh, and partner with the landowners in Hinckley. Uh, especially those that, that are holding the larger tracts of land to find a means, some means, some way uh, of getting buy-in to conserve uh, and preserve. Um, zoning may drive a lot of what goes on in this township. Um, and certainly this group here is gonna do their damnedest uh, to, to make it the best zoning that we can. Um, and we'll lead that direction. Um, but even with the best zoning, uh, the, the character, the rural character uh, of this township, it will continue to erode. Every housing development that goes up is just another piece of land that is gone. It's how many more trees are gone. It's how many more residents are in this township. It's how much more congestion. And it happens very subtly, one little piece at a time. And so long as there is land to develop in this township, there's gonna be a developer sitting in the chair. I'm not pointing at you, by the way. <laughs> the guy that was sitting right here, when asked about the township would say something like, and I quote, I don't care. I wish I cared, but I don't care. Uh, and so please, as trustees, look for unique ways to partner with, uh, with those landowners and, and don't take no for an answer. Try, try every, by hook or crook, every way that you can uh, to get their buy-in because in my opinion, and this is only my opinion, I don't represent anybody else here, the only way we will maintain a rural character is if we conserve and we preserve the land in this township. And then I said, thank you, William Thoman. So, <laughs> that is all. <laughs> well, hi, you have been an absolute joy to work with. I am very thankful that you were appointed to that position. Uh, we are relatively young board. I think Mr. Marzullo is, is outside you the most senior member of this board. And, you know, I very much value your two opinions because you've had such a wealth of experience in this area. And I'm grateful that they brought in someone with your experience. I wish I could speak as eloquently as you. I can't, but I'm very grateful for the time that you've offered to serve on this board with us. I appreciate that. Yes, I enjoyed working with Bill. Bill's, Bill's got his own perspective. <laughs> as do we all. <laughs> You'll be missed. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the floor before we adjourn? I'm sorry to hear what you said. Because <laughs> I thought you do a great job and you do speak eloquently. That was a very well written. Thank you for the compliments, but really um, in the beginning, I thought you were quiet. I wasn't even sure if you had a position, but you do have a big part in this community. I love this community. Yep. And um, so I'm sorry to hear that you're not going to re-up. Um, outside of that, uh, just for uh, something different, we talked about architecture, design architecture. And um, you might want to look at the uh, Cincinnati website, Cincinnati, Ohio, Cincinnati-oh.gov. And they have uh, major architectural styles under their city planning and engagement menu. And they do an exquisite job 
going through every single period of architecture and what the principal features are of that period so that in their planning and their developments, when they define such and such architecture, say in town center, like, you know, future construction adheres to, you know, whatever architectures you want. It's edu educationally, it's a wonderful website. It really, they do an awesome job. I just stumbled across it. So I thought maybe you'd be interested in doing a little research before you engage somebody to tell you what you think you may want. Well, perhaps you'll be sitting on this and you can be the one who has uh, draft the initial to, language because on. someone's got to volunteer to draft the first language on this. So <laughs> I'm already hearing your hand open <laughs> raised. Uh, that's a, uh, a lot to consider. Are there any other comments? As a spokesperson for uh, 350 Hinckley, we've spent four years working with the Zoning Commission on these solar amendments. And it's so nice that they're finally clean and clear. I think you did a great job. Um, I think we probably have, it, pers my personal opinion is we have the best solar regulations of any township in Ohio. I think you did a great job. And I hope the trustees approve of these last two subtle changes in the uh, solar amendments. There's so many amendments before them, they probably won't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Taking no chances, they spent four years. <laughs> if there are no other comments, I'll entertain. Uh, Trustee Augustine, do you have any? Honestly, if I stand up there right now, I might cry because you guys have just done such a phenomenal job. I'm, I'm very proud of this board. You've tackled so much this year. Um, I think that Bill has been a great addition to this board. That's why we brought him on. The expertise and experience that he brought to this board was obviously valued by all of you and your comments to him. We'll miss you, Bill, but certainly have a conversation with the trustees about maybe an alternate position. Um, but I think that, you know, and I, I don't remember who said it, but you know, we, we love this town and that's why we all serve. So I thank all of you for your service to, to Hinkley Township. Thank you. Trustee Ashford, anything? <laughs> I wasn't prepared for it. <laughs> you don't have to say. Anything. No, I, I just, I received your email, Bill, right, as I was walking in. So I have not had a chance to read it yet. So thank you for reading it. <laughs> and I want to thank you for your years in the past and also for this year for stepping in. I think it was a challenging year. Um, like Marcus said, you guys are a newer board. So um, I think that there were challenges, but I think that you all presented your own unique look on it. You're a very good speaker um, and you're very knowledgeable about it. So I think that you will leave a void in the board. So I do hope that you consider applying for the alternate. I, I don't disagree with your recommendation either, but I, I wanna thank you for the time that you put in. I appreciate it. And I am happy to stay on as an alternate one year at a time. Not that we can discuss that right now, no, but no. yes. But that's my no, no, yeah. news for just the bump, it's bumping me out. No, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the email also ahead of time. Absolutely. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn the regular meeting at 8.55 p.m. So moved. Moved by Marzullo. I'll second that myself. Seconded by Fisher. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. No. All opposed? Meeting is adjourned.